Hey everyone. Over the past month, um, I've been putting together some notes of things that I wanted to say to and about the Kim's Convenience cast. Uh, and I've decided to put them all together today and um, put it into this video. So uh, I'll be reading a lot of it because uh, it's easier for me. Um, and I'll ad-lib a little bit as appropriate. So here goes. I will never forget. I will never forget April 8th, 2021. I had gotten my six hour IV infusion in the morning and it hadn't gone well. I was quite sick from it in the afternoon as usual. So I was resting and dozing on and off. In the middle of the afternoon, I saw the announcement. I was pretty sure it was a dream. I kept thinking, wait till I tell Lisa what a weird dream I'm having. And then I realized it wasn't a dream. I gazed at the announcement in continued disbelief. What's the angle? I thought. Like, it's been greenlit for seasons five and six. So this is just a bump in the road, right? Hello, kitty. Like someone's playing politics and trying to twist someone's arm. I'm sure it'll resolve itself. But then we started hearing from the cast and little by little, I began to realize this was real. This was it. Kim's was coming to a premature end. I became angry. I wanted someone to blame. Who had done this? And then I started feeling really betrayed because we, the fans, had busted our butts to promote our beloved show. We tweeted, we blogged, we showed up for events in droves. We talked to our friends and family members. We converted our parents, our siblings, and anyone who would listen. Some of us even got personalized license plates. Guilty. We begged CBC to renew Kim's convenience year after year. We voted for our favorite cast members to win People's Choice Awards. We voted thousands of times, literally, to get Kim's convenience added to awards ballots. And many times, we succeeded. I remember how happy we were every time a new season was announced. And when seasons five and six were greenlit, we walked with our heads so high we could taste the clouds. Because once you've got network support and the money behind it, that's all there is to it, right? I mean, petitions were started to try to change minds after it was cancelled. Surely, if they knew how many of us wanted it to stay, that would be enough, right? Apparently not. We were fighting a losing battle, but to top it all off, the people responsible for the decisions have been completely absent from the conversation. We can't even begin to understand what led to this, so we stay angry, we stay sad, we hurt, we cry. So as we've been going through all the usual stages of grief, the disbelief, the anger, the guilt, the bargaining, the sadness, etc., I've been writing these notes here and there. Realistically, though, I've stuck my head in the sand more often than not over the past month. If you don't see what's causing your pain, it doesn't hurt as much, right? Except that everything catches up to you eventually. So I wanted to take this time to tell the cast what each of them means to me. Jean. Uma. Everyone's Uma. When the cast came to Ottawa uh, for the opening of season two, she was the one who noticed our t-shirts that said, hug me, I'm a Kimbit. And who made the positive step to say, I want to go hug them. <laughs> And she came over and she gave us the most wonderful hugs, including the best hug I have ever seen when she hugged our daughter. 
she's been a role model for our daughter who is an Asian child wanting to get into acting, wanting to live a completely fulfilled life. And when you have these great mirrors for your child to look up to, those people come and grab you in a way that can't be explained. Jean, I love your passion for food, for languages, and for your family. You are an inspiration. I kind of want to be you when I grow up. Andrea, the first time we met was on that stage in Ottawa when you came for the, uh, the premiere of season two. At that point, we had already met a few of the other cast members, and I'll never forget what you said to me. You said, oh my gosh, I can't believe I'm finally meeting you, or something like that. <laughs> I don't remember the exact words, but I remember the intent. And I thought, what? Why? Why? Why do you want to meet me? I'm the one who's excited to meet you. And that was the beginning of many conversations that we've had over the years with the cast about how important we are to them. A few years later, I saw you again at Bad Dog Theatre and you took time to speak to every single person there. And I know that wasn't easy because you're an introvert and being out there and being in the spotlight is not something that um, that you're super keen on. But the spotlight was on you that evening and we all noticed the time that you took with everyone. You took time to answer questions. You took time to just chat and with excitement in your eyes seeing every single one of us. You're quiet you're creative. You're another really great role model for our daughter. I love the way your mind works. And I so hope that we're going to get to see much more of your creativity on screen in the future. Andrew. <laughs> Andrew. The first time we met was at Bad Dog Theatre. Um, and we've met you so many other times after that. Um, we have so very much enjoyed watching you do improv. We also love the fact that you um, have come out when you know that we're really excited about seeing you and you may not really feel like coming out in those evenings. Um, and you know what I'm talking about in terms of, you know, times where you, you know, almost canceled, but didn't because you knew that we were on our way. Uh, those things resonate with us and will always be so very much appreciated. Andrew, you're a giver. You give your time. You give your attention, you give gifts, <laughs> and you give the love that we can all feel, whether we're sitting next to you or a million miles away. And let's face it, you've got the best hair and sneakers out of all of us. Hands down, we will never be able to compete with that. <laughs> Nicole, <laughs> the first time we met was also at Bad Dog Theater. It was weird to see you when you're you and not Shannon. And if I thought I loved Shannon, I love you, Nicole, even more. You're such a sweetheart. You're an incredible performer. We loved watching you uh, when we've come to Toronto to watch you uh, on stage in uh, other productions. And more than anything, I appreciate you signing my DVD the day that um, you weren't supposed to be giving autographs and um, I felt so anxious after that because I was afraid I got you in trouble and you were so sweet and reassuring. Uh, but, you know, those are the little things that it, 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 we're always going to remember those incredible, you know, moments that that may not seem insignificant to some people, but they're really, really meaningful to us. So thank you for that. 
Simu. The first time we met was at Bad Dog Theater. Um, and it was the first time we went to Bad Dog Theater. And then we saw you again at the premiere of season two in Ottawa. Um, we had tweeted that we were bringing treats for people in line and also for uh, the cast. And you were very excited about those. And just before you guys went into the, the building, uh, I showed you the tin and you came over and you gave us hugs and you told us that you were happy to see us again. And again, something that may seem so little was just such a big thing. And then on stage, <laughs> this sounds so weird to describe, but <laughs> when you took your shirt off <laughs> so that we could have the best possible picture with the cast, you know, we stood there as a group and, and I had my arm around you and you had your arm around me. And I remember thinking about how much trust it required for you to feel comfortable in that situation and to know that um, it was bringing me and others, many, many others, so much joy to have that moment. You also tweeted when we had our 10 year forever family day with our daughter with so much heartfelt excitement um, and there was one year that um, you even tweeted a, a birthday video just for me. And those things, though they may not have taken a lot out of your time, are really, really meaningful. And I thank you for those. I love that you use your current public platform to call out anti-Asian violence. You're helping, making, you're helping make my daughter safer. And I appreciate that. I love that you're showing the world that Asian men can be incredibly sexy. I love that you're demonstrating that Asian men can be sensitive, emotional, and empathetic. But also that they can be muscular, athletic, and that they can be superheroes. Paul. First time we met was on stage in... 2017 in Ottawa the premiere of um, season two you were standing there waiting to welcome us on to the stage after Andrew had called us up there and I remember just being in disbelief that Appa was standing there greeting us it was the most surreal moment and we had some exchanges afterwards. Um, I brought you granola bars, uh, and it was exciting to even just be able to do that. Um, and then we saw you again in Toronto in November 2017. And I remember this because I had just gotten out of the hospital and had been face to face with a health scare that really um, was emotional for me. And when we saw you, you gave me the biggest, tightest, most needed hug ever. And in that moment, I realized how important you were to me and to my family. And the fact that you're always ready to meet with fans, to interact with fans, to uh, follow them back on Twitter. You are the fans fan. <laughs> you are the one who... Um, knows how we feel and you love giving us the experiences that uh, you know will get us excited and I love that about you. 
I love that you regularly talk about how much hashtag representation matters. And it does. So, so, so much. You're humble and you're down to earth. And seriously, you give the warmest, tightest, most comforting hugs that exist on the face of the planet. So that's the main cast, but then there's also some um, other characters who deserve honorable mentions. Sujit, um, for coming to my birthday party. Don't even remember which year it was now, but how exciting it was to get together with fellow Kimbits, which I will talk about in a moment, and to have you at the table too. That was very, very cool. And for joining us in the premiere for season five, um, and always enthusiastic about being able to interact with the fans. That's just so awesome. To John, who plays Mr. Chin, um, we've had such great conversations. And I love that it all started with my love for the Montreal Canadiens and the fact that um, my grandfather played for them. I should say I'm a Canucks fan now, so if you guys are anti-Habs, don't, don't go jumping down my throat. <laughs> Speaking to you, Paul. Um, but um, I gave you my grandfather's autographed hockey card, and um, that just start, was the start of such a wonderful friendship between us. Um, and so I appreciate all of the times that we've been able to chat about everything. Elora, who plays Mrs. Meta, thank you for your kind words. Thank you for your friendship. You are such a beautiful person inside and out. And I've really enjoyed getting to know you. Gavin, uh, the serial guy. <laughs> I, I'll never forget how excited you were when I asked you for your autograph on my DVD and, and it, you told me it was the first time somebody had ever asked you for your autograph. Um, so um, that was kind of a cool moment. And, and the fact that you gave so many of us your headshots, you're just such a funny guy, like not just on TV, but in person. You're so awesome. Um, Rodrigo, uh, I love that you so generously, you know, lifted your sleeve and showed us your panda tattoo. Um, and I love the conversations that we've had in, in DMs because um, we've had some pretty interesting ones and um, kind of conversations I probably couldn't have with anyone else. So thanks for uh, the cool chats. And there's so many others, Ben and Michael and Ziad and Akoswa and Amanda and, and, and it I, oh, just, I wish I could say a little bit about everyone. To the Kims. We've watched you for five years as a family. You as a family and we as a family. You gave us strong mirrors for our daughter to look up to. Until she started acting, she genuinely had no idea how hard it was to be a person of color in the entertainment business because through you, so many of the people she saw on TV looked like her. You made us laugh when we needed it and cry when we did too. You made us angry when we should be, and you made us uncomfortable when it was necessary to do so to teach us a lesson. And along the way, you created a community of fans, the Kimbits, who have become kind of like our family. Kimbits Mike and Ruby have become two of my best friends, as has uh, Kimbit Lisa. We love the time we've been able to spend in Toronto with Steve and Anna and Chris and Chi Hung, and Alfredo, Colin, Mel, Jennifer, Robert, Daniel, Marie, Joe, God, I know I'm forgetting some people and I apologize for anyone I've forgotten. Going through this sad evening during the height of a pandemic is a double shot to the heart. All I want are Kimbit hugs. And I'm not allowed to be within six feet of them. <laughs> And while we don't want to accept it, there's nothing we can do about this. 
Kim's Convenience is over. Sounds like we'll get to keep seeing Shannon, which is a true joy, and I hope that there will be the odd Kim's character brought back for a scene or two. But we also need to remember that we fell in love, not only with the show, but especially with its people. And they're not leaving us by any stretch of the imagination. Paul, Jean, Andrew, Simu, Andrea, and Nicole are still here. We will continue to have the joy of seeing them in new projects and new adventures. But for now, it's time to say thank you. Thank you for everything. And to say goodbye. Goodbye, Jung. Goodbye, Kimchi. Goodbye, Janet. See you later, Shannon. Goodbye, Amma. Goodbye,